Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure to have Brian Bishop back with us. Uh, not only is he the CTO of Avanti Back and Trust, but he has uh, wicked typing skills. And so he um, uh, does a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the recording of all the Bitcoin um, related talks. And so he's going to Give, he's going to give us a, a talk on Bitcoin transcripts and the awesome stuff he's been able to write down throughout Bitcoin's history. Thank you. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a little bit of a meta talk. It's a talk on Bitcoin talks. Uh, as uh, Daniel just mentioned, uh, you know, one of the contributions that I made to the Bitcoin community is this resource of transcripts. And not a lot of people know about it. And I think it's uh, very helpful to know about uh, when someone is diving into Bitcoin and Bitcoin Core in particular. So I just wanted to talk about it and, and let you guys know what it is and, and what's available. So I'm gonna be doing that. Uh, I'll point out some interesting talks, some interesting conferences that uh, you might've missed over the past 10 years. Um, and then I also wanna talk about the future of this endeavor going forward. So, I am uh, a Bitcoin Core contributor. I have written some code. I have, I think one commit, but someone else committed for me. So it's like Brian as someone or someone for Brian or something in there. So most of my contributions are um, elsewhere in the ecosystem. This is one example is these transcripts. But my background is software engineering. I am a developer. I'm now CTO at Avanti Bank and Trust. We're a bank for both cryptocurrency and also fiat and, and you know, traditional core banking like wire transfers, ACH, and so on. Um, yeah, let's get started. So uh, there are many different conferences and talks in this ecosystem. And in my opinion, all talks should have transcripts. Well, I happen to have a very fast rate of typing, a high typing speed. And so when I'm at a conference, what I usually do is I listen to each talk and I write a transcript. and I, I usually publish those within a few seconds at the end of the talk because I'm done typing it. And then I push them out and, you know, put it on Twitter and, and you know, websites and so on uh, for a few reasons. One is uh, a lot of these talks are important. And sometimes the rationale for how certain systems are designed, the only time that that was really uh, verbalized was in some talk that you've never heard of. And so if it's only available in some audio recording or some video recording of some obscure conference, you're never going to find out about it. Even if it's a really important thought or important contribution, you're just not going to see it. So yeah, transcripts have a lot of value. I mean, we're all busy professionals and we don't have a lot of time to, to watch video. You know, a lot of people who do watch video or even podcasts are often setting it at two X, you know, because they want to speed it up. They want to get it done. Well, you can, you can read very quickly. You can just search for wherever you want to start in the document. You can get a anchor link for, some section in the document, it's uh, can be really nice. Um, what I have found is often the transcripts that I produce, especially in, in conferences, are most valuable when they're made immediately and also published immediately after the talk. So in some cases, people have joked, I've, I've published a transcript before the speaker sat down. You know, he got off the stage, off the podium, walking to a seat, it's, it's already there, it, it's done. Um, I find that uh, in general, uh, it tends to be less useful if they're published two weeks later. Um, first of all, the people have gone off their separate ways, the audience is gone, and they don't, uh, they don't, it's not something you check on. You don't really check back at a conference you went to a few weeks ago. That, that was the past. You look forward to the future. So if you have a link immediately, people are like, oh man, I missed that talk or something, and you say, here's the link. Um, so. Oh, also uh, travel. Uh, so this is an old bullet point from a previous presentation I did at the Crypto Economics uh, Summit a while back, but uh, not everyone can travel. So nowadays it's not, um, that doesn't need to be said, but you know, before COVID, it was an issue. You know, not everyone is available to travel. They have responsibilities or, you know, or they're in weird countries that don't have good travel. So anyway, uh, even more so now travel is difficult. So thus the remote conference today. So there are a lot of different conferences that I've uh, gone to and transcribed, um, some of which have been transcribed by others who started to join this initiative. Um, 
So just just a uh, you know a word cloud here. Uh, I'm trying to pick out a few that are particularly interesting. I think um, on the bottom left there, um, the Bitcoin Core Dev Tech, you know, 2017, 2019. I mean, I mean that obviously is continued. But what what those are? If you go to that category on any of the websites that host my transcripts, there's a few actually, some that I didn't make. Um, that category is interesting because it's actually when Bitcoin Core developers meet up and talk in person and they give technical presentations to each other. Now, you know, the reason they meet up in person is because in some cases it can be more productive to meet up in person. But the consequence of it is that it's generally non-public and, you know, it's a little private event and it's just some people hanging out. And so what are you going to do? You know, are you really going to record that with video or what about a transcript? And a transcript has worked out pretty well. Um, so that 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 one, if you go click on like btctranscripts.com, there's a lot of interesting content. Um, another one to point out, I should shill for MIT Bitcoin Expo, of course. Um, there's a number of the years of, uh, of this event in there. At the very bottom, another one that has a lot of interesting content is Scaling Bitcoin. Scaling Bitcoin is interesting. Um, because uh, uh, it was originally started because of the scaling debates, but it was actually much more broad. It was a it was a venue for talking about potential upgrades and developments for Bitcoin, and it's been every year since. Um, people have presented all kinds of ideas. It's not just block size related. Uh, sometimes it's about mining. Sometimes it's about time warp. Sometimes it's about you know, any, any research topic that you can imagine has been presented at Scaling Bitcoin. So a very, very good resource. Um, in particular, one of the attached initiatives is Bitcoin Edge Dev++, which is a, essentially a training program attached to Scaling Bitcoin. And I've done transcripts for those as well, and also given talks there. Um, this is much more introductory content, or I shouldn't say introductory, but it's much more technical and goes over some things that aren't necessarily research, but already exist. For example, um, you know, one talk I remember went over basic data structures found in Bitcoin Core. Another talk, one of my favorites actually, was uh, just going line by file by file through Bitcoin Core saying, here's where networking is done. Here's where block validation is done and just everything. And like, here's where the code is laid out and here's how the architecture of this project really works. And that was actually a very valuable um, presentation it wasn't research, but it was still uh, quite quite valuable. Some other conferences that are worthy of note, there, there are quite a lot. Um, so, oh yes, yeah, so another interesting set, um, I don't think it's actually in this word cloud, is uh, through the uh, Socratic seminars. So if you're not aware, Socratic seminars are an interesting uh, format for events. It's usually where someone is guiding the conversation. There's an audience, you know, typically 20 to 50 people. And uh, they go through uh, recent links uh, from developments in the Bitcoin ecosystem. And it's a, usually it's an opportunity to ask questions and uh, talk about recent emails, recent proposals, recent uh, pull requests. And quite often there's, you know, the person who actually made that pull request in the attendance. And so you can just ask them and they can explain to the group, here's what that is. Um, one that I've tracked and written transcripts for in particular is uh, the San Francisco Bitcoin devs folder that you can find. It's um, They often do Socratic seminars and also other presentations. Another one is, uh, of course, I'm in Austin, Texas. So the Austin Bitcoin developers also run Socratic seminars and I, I transcribe those as well. Uh, funny story, one time we were talking about, I think, Taproot, and we had a question and no one in the audience could answer it. So what we did was I just went online and asked Peter, P Peter Wolof, because he was online at the time, and I just asked him. And we were able to get live answers from a Socratic seminar in Austin, Texas from Peter Wolof, which was uh, really cool considering he wasn't actually attended. Uh, the Bitcoin community is uh, uh, very resilient like that. If you have a question, you can usually get an answer somehow. Um, not usually that quickly, but that was that was pretty nice. Um, some other ones, um, Stanford Blockchain Conference is, is worthy of note. A lot of uh, research gets presented there as well. Uh, and for some reason, I have some um, biotech stuff in this word cloud, but that's uh, not Bitcoin related, so I'm going to skip that. 
So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, people uh, 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 like to joke around about typing quickly. I mean, I've been ranked highly out of you know 5 million people. I think the result was 30. I'm sure I've slipped since then. That was years ago, just in terms of the progression of people typing quickly. But it's kind of like uh, that, that scene in that movie. Uh, I guess the animation doesn't play, but you guys get it. Um, the goal is to just type very quickly and you can get it all down. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, speaking of Peter, he mentioned, you know, references. I, I try to do references. So, you know, when I'm listening to a presentation, I think something that is very helpful is if there's a, a reference to a pull request or to a academic paper, you know, why not just type out the link, right? Right there. And then uh, people have the reference available. So, um, that's, that's, uh, that's always nice. Um, yeah, more joking. Just people, people like it. <laughs> uh, so how does, how does this work? So essentially you have to type very quickly and people ask me, well, why do you type so quickly? And I really don't have a good answer, but I think part of it was unfortunately, uh, arguing on the internet. So when you argue on the internet, basically the person who types the most wins and they're usually, well, yeah, they, they usually win. So if you want to argue on the internet, that's a good way to get faster. But actually with transcripts in particular, I started doing this um, back in high school and I, I was just so bored with the curriculum. And, and I was like, is this really a valuable use of my time? And so what I did is I did a word for word transcripts of every presentation and every lecture from every teacher. And my goal was to print it out at the end and hand it over to like the principal or, or something and just say like, guys, this is a, a waste of time. Like, you know, like do better. And uh, anyway, it turns out no one cared, but you know, I have some nice transcripts left over from that. So that's always interesting. Uh, so yeah, I mean, so what is it when I type? I mean, it's actually just Markdown. And uh, I had set up a Git repository with um, a tool called IkiWiki, which is a, it's a flat file wiki compiler, it takes files and converts them from Markdown to HTML, static site generator, basically. So it just runs on every git push with a git push hook. So for the bookmarks, like the references, usually um, just because of my engagement in the community, I usually already have a bookmark for the papers that get brought up in the talks. So that's why I'm able to quickly and rapidly get a link and just insert a link to a reference is because I, I do that. Um, my bookmarking tool of choice is called JotMuch, which is a play on words for not much, which is a really good email client I, I can recommend. JotMuch is actually deprecated, and I, I think I'm probably the only user left of it, but uh, everyone else has migrated to Buku. And so it's just a very simple command line tag-based bookmarking system. So if anyone needs one of those, I, I recommend uh, Buku. So one of the interesting things I found is my transcripts have ended up in all sorts of weird places. So one, one place to check is always Google Scholar. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. So you know, here's the results from just searching for the URL. And there's all sorts of stuff. It gets into papers, it gets into talks, it gets into um, even uh, patent applications as well. So just looking at these results, here's, here's one interesting one. Researcher who edited baby's genome retreats from view as criticism mounts. This is actually a, another area of interest of mine, but in this particular case, in this, um, I think it's the Journal of Biomedicine, I think, uh, they linked to a transcript I did of a Hong Kong presentation of uh, Zhang Kong uh, Ha, and he, um, he actually uh, is in jail now, but um, that's interesting. Second one is an FBI agent, a DOI biologist, like any other, a cultural analysis of a biosecurity risk, cultural analysis. That's funny. That's, that's biology for you. But yeah, I mean, I mean, it's also a way to find all sorts of Bitcoin related papers as well. You know, at the bottom here, you know, analysis of the Bitcoin transaction set. And they, they apparently uh, chose to link to um, a transcript I did of Greg Maxwell when he was talking about all the features in uh, Bitcoin core uh, 0.15 which was actually a really good presentation. Um, that's actually a, one of my favorites. Um, it was just very detailed and went through all the features and why the features are 
interesting and, and worthwhile. Um, so, yeah, um, this was some stats I compiled a while back, you know, obviously two years ago, but uh, in the past year, it hasn't changed as much because my time has been divided very substantially, you know, with other work commitments, um, which brings me into another topic I'll talk about in a few moments. But for the most part, this hasn't changed too dramatically. But, you know, over the past 10 years, it was about 1.5 million words. And um, by my count, it was 640 um, presentations. But um, apparently that number was actually uh, low. And I'll, I'll go over that in a moment as well. Um, so one of the things I was doing was arranging for funding for this sort of initiative, whether it would fund me or someone else, I, I didn't really, uh, have any insight into it or, or any care which way it would end up. But, um, look, I mean, there, there are companies out there in the Bitcoin ecosystem who are very interested in supporting this sort of initiative. Um, yeah again, whether it's me or not, and I would prefer, in fact, that it would be someone other than myself, simply because of time commitments. I mean, this is a, a good way to travel the world and meet a bunch of people, be a bunch of, bunch of very smart people, actually, and um, just get very, very deeply involved in Bitcoin technology development. So if anyone's interested, you know, always ping me and, and uh, I can get something arranged, I think. So I guess, uh, I guess I just mentioned that. Um, so one of the things I tried, which is of interest, is um, a few years ago, there was the um, presentation uh, from Baidu about deep speech, um, which was a, a, uh, something they, they released from machine learning for transcription of audio. So it was speech to text. And so I did a transcript of that, funnily enough, but then I also decided to do an implementation of my own. It was actually at a conference once, and I think it was, I'm gonna attribute it to Mark Friedenbach. He tapped me on the shoulder, he's another Bitcoin developer, and he was like, Brian, you're, you're sitting here typing, you're doing a great job, but you know, you're, you're a software developer, why not just write some software to solve this problem? And I said, huh, that's, a, that's an interesting idea. So I did an attempt uh, at an implementation based off of deep speech. And, uh, you know, TensorFlow, Keras, typical machine learning stuff. Uh, unfortunately, my implementation had a very high error rate. And the error rate of my machine learning implementation was higher than my actual error rate of me typing, at least in terms, I mean, you know, when I type, the typos are pretty minimal anyway, but, you know, in the scheme of things, a typo doesn't matter, but getting an entire word or sentence wrong is catastrophic to the readability of a transcript. And so, Unfortunately, my implementation of this was not viable. However, uh, since then, Mozilla has started working on their own deep speech implementation. And so I haven't had a chance to use that, but um, I, think, I think that's really interesting to look at at some point. So, um, you know, having been to so many conferences and typed so many transcripts, I mean, there's like real data here we can analyze and really look at like, you know, which talks had the best content, you know, the most useful content, you know, that we can actually just go look and score it and, and, and make a study out of this. Um, perhaps we can eventually get some sort of feedback loop to make better and better conferences by looking at the real data that gets generated at a conference. Um, you know, keep in mind that there is, uh, you know, usually at a conference pre pandemic, a bunch of people travel to a location and they spend a whole bunch of money on hotels and travel, airfare, all sorts of stuff. And their time is valuable. And you have, you know, possibly hundreds of people in an audience. And if you do the math on, you know, the value of their time, you're, you're putting in a lot of money and value into a conference. And so there's a very large incentive to optimize the experience and the outcomes. So I think that's something that conferences could do. Um, uh, much better. I don't, I don't think it's something that they generally focus on. Um, so since this is a, a talk hosted under the banner of MIT Bitcoin Club and, you know, uh, probably the Media Lab for all I know, um, uh, I think, um, well, especially DCI does very well with this, but in other contexts, academia does not do well. That in particular, there's 
for example, these transcripts, there's the Bitcoin dev mailing list, um, which has a whole bunch of discussion and traffic and often it has research and proposals. And unfortunately, when um, other people write manuscripts, it's often that this sort of existing content, like even on bitcointalk.org, doesn't get cited. And so just be aware that you know there is content out there. And even, even though it wasn't like formally published in an academic journal, it still has value. And it's still something that, that people should cite. Um, there are some institutions that do this very well. Um, don't get me wrong, but I just think the message should be out there more that like these resources exist. And that's uh, basically the whole point of the talk. Um, so bookmarks, uh, not much to say here, back up your data. Um, so uh, I suppose one other thing to mention on the topic of academia is uh, manuscripts. Um, if anyone's ever interested, there are a few people in the community that have a library of different uh, manuscripts from the Bitcoin you know, research ecosystem. Uh, some of them date back quite far. So if anyone ever wants that, there's there's mine, I have a collection. There's also um, a few others and I think they're all public, but anyway, uh, someone maintains a spreadsheet, for example, there's there's a lot of work that goes in, into this. Um, and this is important, you know, for being able to convey knowledge and why things are the way they are and, and what people were thinking at, at different times. So, when I mentioned earlier uh, 650 transcripts, um, apparently that number was low. Uh, Adam Jonas at Chain Code Labs um, put together a website called btctranscripts.com quite recently, and he announced that. And it's actually just a, a really nice interface to browse the transcripts that I've been talking about, and uh, uh, much better than the other site I, I have. Um, so yeah, I encourage people to check it out and, and go take a look. Um, a lot of interesting content there. Uh, finally, on a, on a closing note, I mentioned I'm CTO at Avani Bank and Trust. We are hiring. Um, in this context, I think software engineers would be ideal. Uh, but, you know, uh, check us out, see if there's anything that uh, you think you could help us with. On that note, that is the conclusion of my talk, and I'm happy to take questions. Yeah, and we do have some questions for you. Uh, so first question was whether you were typing your own, were you transcribing, were you, will you be transcribing your own talk as it happens? Right. Yes. So actually the answer is no. And it's an interesting problem. It's kind of like that thing where when you start hearing yourself speak, you can't speak anymore. It's kind of the same thing with typing. And so even in like, uh, outside of conferences, I, I do it for business meetings sometimes, you know, and like, you know. Uh, need to write down important information. And um, the trouble with it is that I have all these wonderful transcripts, but they always miss what I was saying. So I get everyone else's input, but not my own. So that's an unfortunate downside of this. So, oh, well. Uh, another question is actually two questions. How to orient these speech to the technical jargon of Bitcoin developer technique speak? I guess like, how are you able to orient the deep speech to accommodated technical oh, jargon. I, oh, I wasn't. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> No, I mean, that's a, a great question. No, I wasn't. <laughs> um, and how much time percentage do you put into indexing, uh, cliff noting, executive summarizing the content slash executive summarizing content? Actually, not as much as I should. A lot of the transcripts, honestly, is um, <laughs> I just type it and then I never I very rarely look at it again, I perhaps send the link along. But uh, it's actually other people that end up editing it, um, which is very helpful, you know, fixing my typos. They're not that bad, but, you know, they exist. Yeah. And, but, it, yeah. and we have one last one. Uh, is there any exciting topic that you covered in the early Bitcoin times that somehow was connected to Satoshi himself? Well, hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, I can't think of anything. Um, I would say my Bitcoin related transcripts started around 2013, perhaps. Uh, there might be one earlier. But um, no, I mean, in general, like especially among Bitcoin developers, it's, um, 
it's it's um, I wouldn't say rude, but it it is a concern of trying to reveal Satoshi Nakamoto's identity, and no one knows who he is and everything like that. But you know, it could still be dangerous. Like we don't know who this person is, and you know, if they're still alive, and if their identity was to be revealed, that could be very very dangerous. And so, you know, do we want to be responsible for that? You know, do we want to be involved in something like that? And generally, people don't don't care. You know, they 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 want to let it be. You know. I, I agree with that. And the last one is not a question, uh, but it's just a statement. And that is someone that uh, was saying that that is a great map of Bitcoin conferences. So thank you for that as well. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Brian. We really, really appreciate you uh, being with us today. Thank you. Um, thank you. And uh, now we will take a short break before we um, give out the uh, Hanak Argo Memorial Award and initiate our closing ceremonies. Thank you so much.